Hey everybody, my name is Mason Drum. Today we're gonna to talk about how I made a wave machine automaton. I needed such a device to turn this into this. So that was a clip from Duel of the Dyad. It was a reimagining of J.J. Abrams' epic uh, lightsaber battle from, uh, I think it was The Rise of Skywalker. I keep wanting to say Duel of the Fates. That's Colin Trevorrow's version that we will never see. So the biggest technical challenge of that film was finding a way to animate, frame by frame, uh, something that resembled a raging ocean, which is why I decided to build a wave machine or an automaton. Now, before we get into the build, I have to give credit to Leica Studios. They're the pros in the uh, stop motion community and it was one of their behind the scenes promotional clips for Kubo and the Two Strings uh, where I found this. So having seen that, I felt confident to move forward with my plans to build a much larger version of that uh, automaton. Here's the breakdown of what I would need to make. Please forgive the rough sketches. I figured this would be the best way to explain all the components that went into building this thing. Um, what you're looking at is roughly the, the design of the weigh machine. Uh, the frame measures 40 by 55 inches and was built using scrap 2x1s installed uh, on top were three quarter inch PVC pipes and each pipe was fitted with laser cut quarter inch plywood circles that would act as cams to turn rotary motion into linear motion. Once glued in place, the pipes were fitted with gears which linked everything together. A lighter frame was later installed above the cams to support the rod stabilizers, those green boxes, and of course the rods at themselves. Here's how it all came together in the shop. I'm beginning the automaton, the wave machine. Prototype right here, I'm happy with that. And now I've bought material, wood, and about to do some work building the frame. Okay, we went from this to this. This is the foundation of the automaton. Now I'm working with the Fab Lab. They're going to engineer some gears that allow me to have one crank right here. So, oh yeah, and I'm got to I still have to laser cut the I got to laser cut wooden versions of these circles that are about five and a half inches in diameter. I'm at the Innovations Hub, and Brant Smith is helping me design two versions. Uh, one, this is gonna make the wave height very dramatic and it's gonna be less dramatic. And these are gonna go, the smaller, less dramatic are gonna be on both ends. And then the really dramatic ones are gonna be in the middle so it gets a nice big crescendo of a wave. So there were 30 cams that needed to be laser cut and those were designed in Adobe Illustrator. Now you'll notice perpendicular lines etched into each cam and we put those there as a visual aid so I could line up all the pieces on the PVC pipe in a way that made the horizon of the machine seemingly move in that wave motion. Uh, and you can see it better in a moment once all the cams are installed. So once we had all the pieces cut, I began assembling them onto the PVC pipe and spacing them out appropriately. Because the circles were attached off kilter, I had to space out the cams in an uneven manner to avoid any collisions. Once I was happy with the configuration, I simply hot glued the cams down to the pipe. Uh, and since there's little to no weight bearing, I really didn't need anything stronger than hot glue. Plus, using hot glue allows me to disassemble everything if I ever want to change the relative motion of the automaton. So once the cans were installed, Tyler and Brent worked on designing the gears. They use Gear DFX, which is a free gear designing software you can find online, and I've put a link to it in the description for anybody who's interested. Um, before cutting out the gears on wood, we went ahead and used foam board uh, for our prototype. So this is like day two after building the frame. We come here, we laser cut these discs. Uh, I've spaced them out, but beyond that, I haven't really done anything. I've left it to Tyler and Brent, the engineering specialists for this project. So this is Wave Automaton. Uh, how, how are we getting everything to move in unison? Well... <laughs> I have an idler gear here, which makes sure that each of these larger gears just turn in the same direction. Then, uh, Mason and I have devised this contraption. You can see all the iterations of it. Yeah, we're right going there. through some options. They get more and more complex and or more, more and more stupid. Which this allows for I guess the arm that the waves actually ride upon to travel up and down from a linear or from this this alternate. I don't know how to explain this thing. As this thing <laughs> turns, this goes down. up and down. <laughs> 
So this rep this is going to represent the top the top right. piece that we have. Right. So this is this is keeping it stable from wobbling back and forth. Right. There's going to each one of these. There's going to be pegs on this. Oh, just twisting it out there. Don't twist it. Oh, really? oh my gosh! So freaking sweet. At this point, I had probably put in about 25 hours in the automaton. So this was a really exciting moment for me. We've got cardboard. <laughs> on top of this, we're drilling holes through each of them and then we laser cut. Hold on, Brandon. We've got this guy that helps keep the spoke in alignment. Alright, so we're gonna test to see if it works. Should go up and down. It, it's working. Once we got the gears all figured out, we started working on building a contraption that would allow us to turn the cam's rotary motion into an up and down linear motion. So we needed a way for a rod or a stick to rest on the cam, move up, stay in alignment, and not fall off the disc. Uh, and we needed to eliminate as much friction as we possibly could so the movements of the machine stayed smooth. Uh, this proved to be the most challenging part of the build. And right here you can see the first iteration we came up with using a laser cut box to support the thin dowel rods that would go up and down. And what you're watching now is my first test after I completely installed one of the rows with our contraption. Uh, and at this point, the contraption had worked. I had hot glued all 30 boxes together, and here is my first test with a row of them installed. Good. It was a failure. The dower rods weren't stiff enough and the circular holes caused too much friction. And there was nothing smooth about it. And so we had to go back to the drawing board and redesign the entire thing along with the foot that would rest on the cam. And we made it all one singular piece. This made the rod much stronger and the right angles of the laser cut wood allowed for more rigid version two of our box contraption. Instead of circular holes for the dower rods to fit in, we had a rectangle cut, the new rod would slide up through it, and then I hot glued that small U-shaped brace to keep it in the appropriate position. A wide, rounded triangle sits at the foot of the rod with two panels glued to each side to keep it aligned. The foot had a wide triangle shape because it had to maintain contact with the cam as it moved and rotated in every position. And we went through multiple iterations of this contraption, and I really just love the problem solving, design, and creativity that those, these types of projects require. Um, my channel name is Making Things with Cameras, and this pre-production part of filmmaking, where I'm trying to move from concept to the real world object, uh, is really one of my all-time favorite things to do, um, and definitely one of my favorite things about filmmaking. Eventually, I would finish installing everything, and here's the first test. Before I could begin filming, I needed the right material to throw on top of the wave machine. So I went to a local hobby store, ended up going with a poly satin material which gave just the right blend of texture and reflection. Here it is in my garage studio, a rough look at what it looked like early on during testing. Uh, and transitioning it now to a few weeks later, I'm in the thick of animating the wave machine from different angles, lighting conditions, perspectives. I shot against a green screen and of course would later composite all the footage back together to create my raging ocean. This project was such a fun challenge for me, more complex than anything I've ever tried to pull off before, but I couldn't be happier with the bill and how it was all able to fit into my short animated film. If you haven't seen Duel the Dyad, the link is in the description below, and if you don't mind, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later.